Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, for those of you who are new, a warm welcome to you and returning uh, watchers, an equally warm welcome to you. And for anyone who's watching right now, press the like, subscribe, share button um, with your fellow colleagues as it helps really get this uh, quality content out to the traders that need it by helping me uh, boost it, I guess, in the rankings for um, in on YouTube and other social media platforms. So again, just a bit of an overview in case you're new about the Trading 180 process. We apply fundamental analysis uh, to establish directional bias and then technical uh, analysis, supply and demand strategies to time our trade entries, risk management and establish profit targets. This is not one versus the other. We use, you know, both to make the best trading decisions, right? So um, getting on to the, uh, the weekly uh, week ahead, I guess, um, and some of the fundamental analysis from uh, trading economics. And I guess a, a, a short synopsis would be that the uh, war in Ukraine will again continue to wait on the markets next week with any breakthrough on ceasefire unlikely to happen anytime soon. Yeah, there was a recent, um, I think Joe Biden was talking about, um, he, well, he called uh, uh, Vladimir Putin a butcher, right? So uh, those are fighting words, I guess. Um, investors also will closely uh, follow the US payroll report and personal consumption expenditure data for any clues on how fast the Fed will tighten um, <clears throat> the monetary policy. So high interest rates. Um, and then there's some, some in-depth detail in here, but um, actually we'll go over a few of these things. I wanted to make it too long because um, I know you guys are here for not only the fundamentals and the, and some other uh, technical analysis as far as, as far as supply and demand, but it'll be a busy week in the US uh, with all uh, eyes on March payroll reports and personal consumption expenditures. Markets expected uh, a, a 475,000 employment gain and a 3.7% rate of unemployment. Another sign of a tight labor market and strengthening for the case, uh, strengthening the case for the Fed to deliver a 50 basis points hike in um, May. So that's uh, definitely something that's going to be watched. Um, we've got, uh, it says elsewhere in America, uh, manufacturing PMIs for Canada, uh, alongside monthly GDP for Canada. That's going to be something to watch. Um, just skimming through this right now. In Europe, key inflation report will be released, were released in the Eurozone, including those for Germany, France, Italy and Spain in the Euro area. The headline HICP rate, which is a measure of inflation, um, uh, I think it's called Harmony Inflation Consumer Prices, I think that's what it is, um, rate is expected to surge again in March, reaching and uh, reaching a new all-time high of 6.5 year on year compared to 5.9 in February. Um, and investors will also keep an eye on the Euro business uh, survey in the United Kingdom. Uh, we'll be publishing the final estimates for fourth quarter GDP growth um, and manufacturing alongside, alongside the current account Bank of England's monetary indicators. That's going to be uh, important as well. And then in Asia, the week will be dominated by PMI readings with reports from major economies including China, Japan, Australia and South Korea. Um, also as well from a risk sentiment perspective, we've got, it says the PMIs are set to reveal how manufacturers are being impacted by strong inflationary pressures intensified by the supply disruptions caused by the war in Ukraine and China's effort to contain widespread virus outbreaks. So that's another risk that's on the horizon if, if China starts to slow down and it does look like they are. Again, we could, um, you know, the case for buying, you know, safe haven uh, assets at least is, you know, like gold and silver definitely is, uh, if it's not already uh, obvious, then um, that's definitely something that we should be uh, looking at trading on, on pullbacks. Um, so with that being said, I think that is pretty much it. Yeah, so hold on. So here's one as well. So Australia's retail sales gorge for February will be monitored to access the health of the consumer spending in the country as analysts look for strong cues for, uh, of economic recovery to give the green light for a rate hike by the Reserve Bank of Australia in the middle of the year. So again, we'll get onto the Australian dollar, but 
the Australian dollar price action has been doing really well, um, not only from a commodities, um, um, it's a commodity currency and commodities are uh, rising in price, but um, the fact that they've got um, the rumour that the uh, Australian, uh, the RBA may look to high rates, right? So that's also going to strengthen the currency. Anyways, let's get on to the technicals and starting off, as we usually do, on the DXY. Uh, which is dollar index. Dollar index is a measure of dollar strength against major currencies, uh, some of them being the uh, the yen, the euro, and the um, and the British pound. So I'm going to start drawing in some of these demand zones again. Uh, thought I start off on a bit of a fresh chart. Um, so we do have an area. Uh, where price has and my bias is really to the long side. To be fair. Um, at the moment, there's nothing really of interest from a shorting perspective that I'm interested in looking to short the dollar. Um, but there is, I hesitate to kind of put that as a as a demand zone. There is demand there, but it's it really isn't for me the strongest area of demand. I think if it prices come down to that 97.40 area, I do like that area as a as a level of demand. And again, that would be confluence, right? So you know, the dollar does start to sell off before the potential hike, then that's really the buying opportunity. So, um, and again, just why would I be looking to buy the dollar? Not necessarily based on the fact that, you know, it's been in an uptrend that makes, um, you know, that's not how we trade at Trading 180. We're understanding why traders and why the market's likely to move higher in the uh, medium to long term. And uh, one of the, uh, one of the things or some of the things are, Fact that Goldman Sachs sees the Fed hiking 50 basis points at May and June meetings, right? So Goldman Sachs, some of the smartest guys in the world, um, uh, now expect the Federal Reserve to raise rates by 50 basis points at both May and June policy meetings, right? So uh, hiking rates generally is supportive of a currency, it appreciates a currency, and that's the intention, right? Is to appreciate the currency. We also have um, Fed Williams saying that a half a point hike on um, is on the table if needed. So, you know, that just confirms uh, what the Federal Reserve or one of the members is actually thinking. Um, so decisions to be made based on economic outlook, Williams says, um, and says that the medium to long term inflation expectations are stable. So medium to long term. But um, I do think that, uh, again, it just confirms really um, you know any kind of pullbacks on the dollar for now anyway at least in the short term are buying opportunities again things can change moving on to uh, Janet Yellen again Yellen sees no weakness in the US economy even with global growth dented so um, in order for the Fed to high rates the, the the economy needs to be able to support it and the economy should be really growing in line with a hike in um, interest rates sorry I said inflation before in a hike in interest rates so um, Janet Yellen uh, said that she expects the US economy, US economy to remain resilient even as higher energy and commodity costs triggered by Russia invasion of Ukraine dent the outlook for global growth, right? So globally, um, China could bring that down, by the way. Um, so we do have to keep an eye on that. But for now, obviously, the sentiment is, you know, to the upside. And really just to kind of confirm that as well in the numbers is that jobless rate falls nearly in nearly every U.S. state with 12 at record lows, right? So un unemployment in a growing economy, what you have is high employment and low unemployment. Unemployment, jobless rate, um, you know, you want that, that number to go down and that's really, you know, what's confirming uh, the economy, right? So the unemployment rate fell last month in just more than half of US states, including the 12 where jobless rates dropped to record lows. So that's always a positive a positive sign, um, especially if you're obviously living in the, in the US, right? But for us traders, we're looking at, um, you know, why we would want to buy the dollar, right? So all signs really fundamentally are pointing to a stronger um, economy, uh, Fed rate, uh, hiking rates, right? So with that being said, it's a no-brainer, and it's been a no-brainer uh, for a very long time. And the guys in my private, you know, mentoring group would understand exactly why. And uh, just a quick reminder, I guess, as I'm talking about that, 
that we do have uh, enrollment will open on the 28th of March. So we've got one day, nine hours from the recording of this video. And uh, not only do you get the supply and demand uh, zone strategies, capture pain relief, stop hunts, um, and, and all that good stuff as well. Um, I'm, you know, personally, you know, mentoring, you know, the groups so I'm in there pretty much uh, five days a week or six days a week. Um, uh, posting you know videos and um, helping guys to really get to where they want to be and uh, I have also have um, you know a, an interviews playlist where you know you can look for it on my channel on the YouTube channel where you can listen to traders who are in the group talk about their experience and the results that they've been getting so um, just a reminder for anyone who is interested uh, 28th of March uh, 2022 so that's uh tomorrow right it's, it's it opens and uh i'm only going to be opening it from for really um about maybe about five to seven days i haven't decided yet but i do want to um i don't i don't really necessarily keep it open for that long um anyways getting back to the dollar so pretty much my bias is to the buy side any fresh areas of demand are really you know confluence areas when buying other currencies like for example the dollar yen dollar swiss talking about the dollar yen let's move on to the dollar yen so dollar yen and um yeah we've got uh this 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 literally look at that price action that is literally unsustainable it cannot continue going higher um you know for much longer i know a lot of traders including myself have been waiting to get involved in this but um, when you've got strong fundamentals and sentiment against you, well, for you, matter of fact, I shouldn't even say against you, but, um, you know, we were looking to go long, but sometimes, you know, these things happen where you have to wait for a pullback, right? We're always waiting for at least a bargain. So we were waiting here and it just didn't come down or anything like that. Now we're waiting for, you know, certain uh, setups to, uh, to occur. Unfortunately, you know, haven't been able to get involved in this trade, um, but we have been um, fortunate enough to get involved in some others. Um, but anyways, uh, dollar yen, again, this was uh, entirely, uh, I guess, predictable, not to say that, you know, we're predicting where price is going to go, but, you know, we're talking about just likelihoods of prices doing what they're doing and um, for anyone who's been paying attention and watches these videos on a regular basis and goes back over the you know the past year I've been pretty much saying you know um, to buy you know me for anyway is buying the, the, the dollar against against the yen right and uh, HSBC in one of their uh, latest reports a weaker yen continue amid uh, amid higher US yields and deficits and just one of the key takeaways from this uh, some of the key takeaways from this is that the uh, dollar yen surged to levels not seen since 2016 mainly due to dollar yen monetary policy divergence i talk about this all the time this is what fundamental analysis is it's just a trade idea right one of the one of the trade ideas anyways is is divergences in monetary policy right which central bank is hiking rates which one is cutting which one is uh, is is holding rates right so um, fading risk aversion in Japan's current account deficit may also have contributed to a weaker yen. So, um, interesting, right? It says, but the main driver should be Fed yen policy divergence. Now, we do have to, um, you know, be, be cautious and be aware that risk off, you know, if it does intensify, that pushes prices down really to where we want to be buyers, right? So, if there's risk off sentiment, for me anyway, again, I can't tell you what to do at home, um, but uh, or wherever you're watching this, but for me, I'm not looking to short because anyone who's been getting short on this has been getting absolutely killed, right? Traders would have been getting short at that level there, been getting killed, you know, looking at, you know, zooming out, looking at historical levels to try and get short, maybe somewhere around there, they would have been looking at, yeah, right there. They would have tried to get short there, thinking, "Oh, you know, it's gonna, it's gone up high enough, right?" And then they've got, you know, caught in there in that trade, right? Or they've been stopped out, or worse, not even stopped out. They would have stopped, suffered from loss aversion bias, which would have caused them to move and remove their stop loss, and now they're in. You know, if they considered risking one percent on their account down here. Now they might be down. I don't know. 30%, for example, 40%, 50%, because they're because of their inability to, to to accept the loss, right? So for me, if prices come back down to this 119 area, um, that's where I really want to be a, a buyer. Also as well, just um, one of the confluences that I use um, is, is looking at um, 
is move, moving fair value. Um, uh, I don't really want to call them moving averages because an average is really a fair value, right? When, when it comes to talking about price. So uh, this blue uh, moving fair value is the uh, monthly, which is the 21 uh, day, because um, there's 21 days in a trading month. So this is the one month uh, moving fair value and where fair value at the moment is, is at uh, 118s to 117s. That's a simple and the exponential uh, moving uh, fair value um, uh, indicator. So anything above this, any any when prices go above that, what you're actually saying is is that this is an expensive price, and you nobody wants to be buying at expensive prices. You know, um, regardless of whether it continues to go higher. If you do, good luck to you on that one. But personally, I'm a bargain hunter, or at least. At, you know the minute fair value looking at you know this exchange rate to kind of come down because it always does again as i was saying this price action is totally unsustainable you know anything that goes you know up like this when you've got you know several bullish candles in a row um higher closes a little bit tiny bit of a pause there but just continues going higher eventually has to come down for uh, several reasons which i won't get into in this video but um, for me, my bias has been to the to the long side. Anyone who's been just trading technical analysis and going short at levels, historical levels, has literally been losing money. Sometimes it's best to sit on your hands, and we have to be patient. And hopefully, you know, say hopefully it's just you know it will come back down to to certain levels, and uh, hopefully that also aligns with you know the the moving fair value uh, as a bit of confluence. And uh, yeah, we know that we're going to be if that's an expensive area, right? And that potentially is a fair value area, right? Fair value. Then at least we do have some upside potential if prices do react around there, right? Because I'm not saying that they will, but um, that's one of the areas that we're looking towards uh, or looking to uh, take when it comes to uh, looking at you know uh, a buy or my bias, anyways. Anyways, let's uh, let's move on. Spent enough time on the uh, on the dollar yen uh so now looking at the dollar swiss dollar swiss and uh many traders got involved in this in the group uh we're waiting for this pullback there's always a pullback as i say um i was in this from down here i didn't manage to add in in fact i was saying to the guys in the group i got in on the uh on the pound um pound swiss on a, on a stop hunt um which were which actually worked out to be profitable got a nice two to one on one of my positions in our swing trading uh you know the the final position hopefully for a few hundred pips if we can get even more than that but i got in really down here and i was waiting to add in so i'm already in this trade to be fair but i was waiting to add in but i was recording a video and editing a video and uh, when i saw the entry i think prices had gone a bit too far for my liking um, so I didn't want to chase price. So if prices do pull back before going higher, uh, I probably will look to look for an entry in and around that zone there. Um, but let's see what happens. But uh, yeah, so this is this is no matter what happens, this is, this is a profitable trade for me. But I know some guys who missed out on getting long down here. This was a nice opportunity to get long, and hopefully with the um, the dollar uh, looking to strengthen and the Swiss franc not you know the Swiss National Bank not really looking to do anything with with rates um, at the moment although their economy is doing okay um, uh, I think they should want to move higher or at least you know retest these uh, the, the 94s so let's see let's see what happens um, from a selling trade perspective from a supply zone you do have a nice supply zone here if you did want to look for any kind of short trades, I think that's probably the best area. Technically, we could look at that area there, but um, yeah, actually that would be because it's lower highs, lower lows. But um, again, it's not necessarily the strongest level of, of supply for, for certain reasons. So if you did want to get short, I do think around uh, this 93.50 half number would be decent for a short, but I think the best area would be definitely uh, the highs. Uh, moving on to the dollar CAD, and the, uh, the the CAD has been really kind of strengthening uh, over the past uh, you know couple of weeks. Matter of fact, against the um, against the dollar commodity currencies, not really interested in 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 trading this pair um, simply because you've got two uh, central banks that are looking to uh, hike rates. So it's a bit more of a difficult trade to take in my book. 
um, I'm really you know focused more on the uh, divergences so you've got a decent zone here um, if you are looking to be a buyer in this area and you think that dollar is an absolute bargain against the Canadian dollar that's a decent zone to get long if not if you're looking for short trades uh, and looking to buy the Canadian dollar then really I think your your supply zone is all going to be all the way up here um, for a uh, for a short trade so you've got quite a few pips uh, pull back currently for for any kind of uh, uh, short trades and looking to buy the Canadian dollar versus the US dollar but for me it's not on my um, not on my uh, currency pairs to trade New Zealand dollar US dollar equally so I'm not really looking to take this uh, currency pair not trading this at all again you've got two uh, central banks hiking rates uh, but you've had uh, the New Zealand dollar uh, making higher highs at the moment and according to our fundamental analysis spreadsheet you've got the New Zealand dollar is actually ranked number one right one being the strongest eight being the uh, weakest the dollar is actually ranked number two um, on here and you can see really the divergence um, dollar yen two versus eight um, so that's you know that that's not still that strong it's been that way for for a while matter of fact and uh, you can see the others um, uh, you know we've got a whole load of um, currency pairs we've got all the currency pairs the major currency pairs anyway I think about maybe about 30 on here which if you join you get access to anyways um, so for but for me you know when you've got one versus two ranked um, again, it's a harder trade to take. It's very difficult to know which one should be the clear winner in a, if, you know, in a straight fight, right? Why bet on, um, you know, uh, 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 any kind of, um, I guess, uh, if you want to call it a game or a match where you've got, you know, two competing teams, right? Which are equal, equal in strength. It's a harder bet, right? Why not bet on, you know, uh, a strong versus a weak team? And if you've got two strong teams, you know, competing against each other, it's very difficult to know who's going to, you know, win in the in the in the short term, medium or long term. Anyways, any pullbacks if you do want to get long, and that really should be a demand zone. Um, is a decent trade, technically, or if you're looking for any kind of sell trades, looking at, you know, buying the uh, the U.S. dollar, then that's really where you want to look for any kind of. Uh, uh, short trades, but for me, again, not really a, a, a pair that I'm I'm interested in. It's a decent zone down here, I think, as well from a demand zone perspective. But um, but yeah, I'll move on. Pound, dollar, pound, dollar. Again, not really my uh, my trade. You've got again two central banks looking to uh, hike rates or that are hiking rates at the moment. Uh, you've got a supply zone right here. Um, you do have actually a demand zone currently right in there so prices are in that demand zone I think prices should probably end up ranging between this high and this low right here and I say ranging but auctioning between uh, these two fair value auction um, so any kind of buy trades if you want to be a buyer of the British pound and you think the British pound is a bargain um, fundamentally against the dollar I'd probably say that would be the um, the best area this is between an expensive area and a bargain area for the pound this is fair value um, fair value is okay but uh, again between these two very difficult to uh, to kind of derive which where 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 uh, uh, where value really is again I think probably my bias would be more again to the short term um, uh, short term trading would be you know to, to short the uh, the the the, uh, the pound against the dollar meaning that I'm looking to buy the dollar basically direction of travel should be to the downside the pound though on the other hand um, one second uh, UK hot UK inflation spurs biggest bets on rate cuts in 15 years hmm, strange one um, traders see more than a quarter point reduction in two years bets come after Bank of England warns of weaker growth as costs surge so in fact it's not really a strange one um, what happens is and I was explaining to the guys in the group is that um, inflation uh, prices when they get a bit out of control 
what happens is is that it can hurt the economy yeah and this is one of the things as, as to why and i guess in the in the medium to long term why i'm probably going to be a, a shorter of the pound is that higher inflation um uh, uh, basically causes uh, people to stop spending in the economy because um, you've got rising uh, living costs and living standards start to drop because you're spending more on things like petrol and heating your home and gas and cooking and food, etc. So in an environment like that, people generally think just think about yourself, right? You tend to cut back on more frivolous stuff, you know, that, that you would normally would when you have money in your pocket. So there are, you know, um, uh, traders actually starting to bet um on on rate cuts you know um i wouldn't i'm not saying anytime soon let me just have a quick read for the article fastest inflation would normally fuel expectations for higher interest rates yeah right high interest rates of course in the uk where price gains are the quickest in three uh, three decades traders are betting on rate cuts so again what we would normally see is for interest rate hikes yeah but i think traders are getting ahead of themselves or maybe they're getting ahead of themselves to use that term, but they're probably thinking a bit more medium to long term and saying that because inflation is really rising quite rapidly. In fact, the you know once um, uh, inflation, uh, the Bank of England does does have a cap on inflation or get a cap on inflation at some point, then they're going to have to potentially cut rates, and this is basically leading to what's known as potential stagflation. So, a very 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 difficult. Um, uh, uh, situation for the for the Bank of England to, to be in when you have inflation that is just shooting through the roof and if you don't have the economy um, supporting that then that's known as you know stagflation so uh, yeah um, it's uh, it's a bit of a difficult one for the uh, to, for, for the pound at the moment and I think short term wise there are um, uh, the Bank of England will have to or kind of forced by inflation to high rates but i think and again maybe by the end of the year you could see um you know the potential for um uh, the, the bank of england to either hold rates or look to potentially cut rates towards the end of the year that would would be something but um it's not necessarily a trade idea that i'm uh, looking to trade just yet but with that on the horizon at some point maybe later this year next year um, you know, the pound could be a potential uh, short. But for now, for me, the pound is uh, is, a, is still a buy as long as the uh, Bank of England are on their hiking cycle. Anyways, um, moving on to the euro dollar, right? Euro dollar. Uh, drawing out the uh, supply zones, demand zones. I want to be a, a seller with this currency pair supply and some demand here. Now... My bias is to the downside because I'm buying the US dollar. So any pullbacks into a zone is where I'm looking to get short. There is a zone here. There, supply zone, not the strongest supply zone in the world, but it's there. Um, I'd probably look for some sort of potential stop hunt in and around this uh, 111.3 area, or if not, a uh, short trade if it does come up to the 112s but it may or may not i know there's a lot of banks forecasting you know 109s 108s so this this could start to still roll over but any pullbacks i think are uh, are uh, shorting opportunities and then we also do have the um the ecb president christine lagarde plays down concerns about euro stagflation again stagflation being when you have rising inflation but the economy is not growing right it's, it's either flatlining or going in the opposite direction uh, more the contraction um, phase of the economic cycle so that's it again it's a difficult situation and the reason why that would be for the economy is because again the russia russia's war in the ukraine will have consequences for growth yeah for for economic growth so um it's it's a hard one difficult one for them to be in and when you contrast where europe are right in comparison to where for example um the us are in terms of you know goldman sachs hiking rates fed williams hike rates janet yellen says no weakness in the economy jobless rate are falling and then you go to europe yeah and christine lagarde is saying you know that there's potential she's even using the word stagflation there's a divergence there right 
So for me, the path of least resistance should be to the downside. I'm not saying it's going to go down this week, right? I have no idea, right, that what's going to happen week to week. I just know that in the medium to long term, if that continues, then prices should be down here in the same way that we've been saying, you know, to short, uh, well, I've, you know, I've been, uh, um, you know, and the guys have been seeing in, in the group that we've been shorting all pullbacks, you know, on, on the on the dollar, right? Any pullbacks have been shorting opportunities, right? That's pretty much it. So that hasn't really changed too much fundamentally or risk sentiment wise. But that is subject to change depending on if the, you know, Europe can get their act together. Moving on to the Australian dollar, US dollar and the Aussie dollar. Again, a bit of a difficult one the, um, to trade. Fundamentally, the uh, the Australian dollar has been doing absolutely brilliantly and we've now you know talks of uh, rate hikes potentially um you know the uh, the market is getting ahead of of the narrative right and this is basically what fundamentals is all about is you know you can't if you're looking to buy when they start to when they actually hike rates you're already you know too late you've already been left behind and so if you are looking to buy the australian dollar against the us dollar which i personally am not doing um, then that's a, a decent zone to get long. If you're looking to buy the US dollar against the uh, uh, the Australian dollar right now is a decent short. But for me, again, you've got um, two, even though the US dollar is ahead, potentially, of, or say potentially, but it is ahead um, of the Australian dollar um, when it comes to monetary policy. Um, I, I, I do think this is a, a harder trade to take, in my opinion. Um, there are better trades to you know, buy the dollar against as well as even buy the Australian dollar. Like, for example, you know, as, as we're coming up to the Aussie yen, right? The Aussie yen, Aussie yen, look at that, right? Again, quite parabolic in nature. Um, the yen being obviously the weaker out of the two, right? Um, and we've got, uh, again, just, just we, we need prices to really kind of either pull back or show that there's demand somewhere, right? There's got to be some demand and then a pullback into that zone. So uh, let's see what happens. Because how many pips is that? Just eyeball that. Maybe about, what's that? 92 to, that's about 700 pips, 600 pips. It needs to pull back. And uh, I don't don't know whether it'll do it anytime soon. Probably maybe some sort of risk off sentiment may push in some narrative, you know, may push prices down um, to a degree. But let's see what happens. And again, just I think to kind of show you on here, uh, you know, that's one of the, what's that, one, two, three, four, one of the fifth strongest divergences at the moment, according to our spreadsheet, which is uh, three versus eight, right? And uh, again, that's been like that for for, for for a while. So looking at, um, going back to the, um, the uh, Aussie yen, at the moment, just no trade setups, right? Zero trade setups from a buying perspective, even from a selling perspective and a shorting perspective. I think we are, yeah, it's, there's nothing really there. There's probably some sort of weekly demand uh, supply zone there, but it's not even worth putting in. Anyways, let's see what happens. Let you know the market show you where an expensive area is by pulling back and then look for potential demand zones um, or the creation of new demand zones. And then moving on to finally gold and gold, moving higher as expected. Nice buying opportunity uh, within that zone there. And then there was a zone here here so probably delete that one there nice buying opportunity um, coming down to that 19 um, 1900 area and prices are going higher and again when you've got uh, the only thing really kind of going against gold if you really want to call it going against gold is just the fact that the dollar isn't um, is one of the strongest currencies and the gold and the dollar um, at the moment are moving in the same direction but when you consider everything else when you consider high inflation when you consider uh, risk off tensions, you know, Russia, uh, Ukraine, when you consider uh, China potential economic slowdowns and, and you know, some other others that are, you know, risk events that are on, you know, with the, uh, the horizon, um, you know, there is, I guess, uh, very, there, there's more reasons to buy gold than, than, than not, right? And uh, in fact, I think it was, um, yeah, here it was, it was the United Overseas Bank Head of Market Strategy, Hing Kun, uh, how now, how, sorry, sees strong safe haven inflows into gold, right? So lifting uh, to uh, uh, $2,200 an ounce. 
right? So um, again, the uh, the smart money uh, at the moment are looking at you know prices being somewhere around here, two thousand two hundred dollars, right? And where we are. So any pullbacks, if you're lucky enough, should be potentially buying opportunities. I'm not saying it's going to bounce off of that le that that area there. If it pulls back, it could go even deeper, right? It could go even deeper. But the point being is that just because prices do something, you have to look at you know this as, as value, right? This is just value and an opportunity to buy for cheap, if nothing fundamentally or risk sentiment has changed. So any pullbacks, uh, potentially buying opportunities, if things do turn around and everything starts to get sorted out with uh, everything in the world, inflation starts to come down and um, you know Russia, Ukraine, you know kiss and make up, then um, in fact this would be a very um, you know, decent short trade. Technically, very nice. I say, I say decent, but very nice short trade. Um, you know, around, around these highs. So uh, that's where we are with gold. And uh, yeah, quite a detailed one this week. And uh, just a quick reminder again, in case you missed it, that the mentoring is open um, tomorrow, twenty eighth of March. Depending on when you're watching this, if you're watching this on a Sunday, it would be tomorrow. Um, but twenty eighth of March, um, the Trading 180 uh, Discord group is open. It will be only be open for a limited time. So uh, maybe I might do it for maybe about five days, maybe until uh, Friday or Saturday. And then um, that's going to be it for, you know, a good few months or so. Um, like to keep the group really kind of concentrated and small. And it's really a better way to teach traders um, when it comes to everyone being on the same page. If people start, you know, uh, joining at different times, you know, someone joins in, March, someone joins in April, someone joins in May. Um, it's not really the way to, you know, we don't do that in school, right? In education. So, you know, there's an intake um, so everyone can be on the same page. So this week is going to be open, then it's going to be closed for again a few months. So if you missed out, you've been waiting to join uh, Trading 180 and uh, the mentoring, um, the mentoring group. Uh, then this is you know your opportunity also as well please have a look at the uh, playlist that I've created uh, um, with uh, really the traders in the group talking about their experience and uh, results and how trading 180 has really uh, helped them to you know get to where they want to be in their trading anyways guys take care have a great week and I'll speak to you all soon